Hey Mod Renders, welcome back for another episode. Uh, today's another scuba episode and we are going to be talking about scuba cylinders or scuba tanks. Um, the thing about scuba tanks is it's not the size that matters, it's really how much air do they hold. Um, I have a few different tanks here. Um, these two are made out of steel. This one here is made out of aluminum. And um, I'll talk about the differences between them in today's episode. And I'm going to be talking about um, how to read a scuba cylinder, all these numbers and letters and stuff like that written on the scuba tanks. So um, really they are scuba cylinders, not scuba tanks. Uh, we talk about them in different ways, but I'm going to do my best to try and say scuba cylinder instead of scuba tank, just because that's what they really are. Um, but anyway, we have steel and we have aluminum. And like I said, it's about uh, what, how much air they actually hold, not about the size. These two scuba cylinders hold the same amount of air. They hold 80 cubic feet. This is a steel 80 and this is aluminum 80. And as you can see, this one is actually larger, taller. Um, this one is smaller. This one holds it under a PSI of 3,500 PSI, which is pounds per square inch. That's the amount of air that's inside of it. And this one is 3,000. The differences between these two and why this one is smaller is obviously that this one is made out of steel and steel can hold under higher pressure and it can be condensed a little bit easier. Um, so it can go to 3,500 PSI and this is 3,000 PSI. These hold the same amount of air. If I were underwater and I had one tank on and I had another scuba cylinder on, they would last me the same amount of time underwater because they hold the same amount of air. This one here, and I'll move it a little bit forward here, is a steel 100. So as you can see in terms of size, it's smaller than this aluminum, but it actually holds more air. And I use this uh, scuba cylinder when I'm generally diving a little bit deeper and I want a little bit more bottom time, I'll use a little a larger cylinder to be able to do that. So basically looking at these two, you might ask, well, why don't I always just buy steel? Steel is about three times the cost of aluminum. So my very first scuba cylinder was an aluminum tank and they roughly cost about $115, $130. Whereas a steel tank, is you're gonna be looking about 350, maybe 400, depending on what size scuba cylinder you get. So that is a factor. You can buy three of these for every one of these, or just about. Um, so uh, another neat thing about scuba uh, cylinders, obviously, is that uh, you need to take care of them. Um, a scuba cylinder will last a really long time. I actually bought um, these two used from a friend who was no longer diving. I knew he took great care of them uh, and they can last a really long time. This particular scuba cylinder, and we'll talk about readings in a second, was actually manufactured in 1991 and, um, and I've get it rehydro tested every five years and it's still in good shape. This guy here, um, this one was manufactured in 95 and once again, I get it hydro tested every five years to make sure that it's in still good shape. Um, so now let's go over and let's actually look at the stampings of the scuba cylinders. All right, so I hope you can see these. Basically what we have here is these are the stampings that you're going to see on all scuba cylinders. The first thing you're going to see on a scuba cylinder is the DOT, which is the Department of Transportation. If you're ever purchasing a scuba cylinder, make sure that it has that DOT stamping. If you're buying something at a garage sale and it doesn't have that stamping, be leery, don't get it. Uh, the second thing we have is we have the material it's made out of. This is a steel, which is this number here. We'll get to aluminum in a second. Um, this isn't as important as as this number right here. This is the fill pressure. This is the maximum amount of PSI it's allowed to go to uh, it's, it, that it's rated to. So as you can see here, this is a 3,500 PSI tank. Um, the next thing you're gonna have here is, uh, we're gonna skip over that, uh, we have the serial number which every scuba cylinder has got a serial number on it. As you can see, this is galvanized steel made in the USA. And then the original, and it's kind of hard to see because this is an older scuba cylinder, September 1991. That's when this scuba cylinder was made. So it's very important to have it be in cur current hydrostatic test. A hydrostatic test is they fill it with water, they check for the expansion, they make sure that the elasticity comes back and that it's pressurized safely and they fill it with water to actually pressure 
pressurize it um, to check for those things. That's what a hydrostatic test is and it's done every five years. So this one, 1991. This scuba cylinder was not used uh, because like I said I bought it used um, and then when I got it I had a brand new stamping put on it uh, back in uh, May of 99. Um, as you can see every five years I get a new hydrostatic test. So this one was last tested in 2009 in September and it's good until October 1st 2014. So this year, 2014, I'm going to need to have a new hydrostatic test done to make sure that this scuba cylinder is in good shape. Um, I'm not going to open up my cylinder and talk about it, but a visual inspection is done where we actually open it up, let all the air out, and we look inside, or a professional looks inside of it to make sure it doesn't have any rust, which is in a, a steel tank or an aluminum oxide, um, and make sure that all the insides are done. And that is done basically every year. Um, if I lift this up, you can see it's done every year. and There's a stamping uh, sticker put on it every year for that visual inspection. All right, so this guy is my aluminum cylinder. And basically, if you can make that out, once again, we have, move this around so you can see it. We have the Department of Transportation. And then this coating is 3AL, and that stands for aluminum, which is also up here, 3AL aluminum up there. Once again, very, very important number is the PSI rating. This is a 3,000 PSI tank. Then we have my serial number, the company that made this. This was a Luxfer scuba cylinder that was made. And then once again, we have the original hydrostatic test, uh, November 1995. So 95, then I had to retest it in 2001, and now it's uh, retested again in 2006. So this guy needs a new hydrostatic test as of uh, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 2011. As you can see, there's no stampings on it uh, because it's out of hydro. Um, I haven't used this cylinder in years. I pretty much don't use it anymore. Um, but if I plan on using it, I need to have a new hydrostatic test done on it. And then the last thing on a scuba aluminum tank, if you can make that out, I don't know if you can see that very well, this says S80. S is how much cubic feet it holds. So if it's a smaller tank and made out of aluminum, it might say S63 or S45 or S40. All different uh, amount of cubic feet uh, that it holds. So this is 80 cubic feet of air. And that's uh, basically uh, how you read the scuba cylinders. So that's, um, that's basically um, how you read a scuba cylinder. Um, I, I hope that was informative for you and it kind of made sense of all the different markings. Um, it's important that if you're going to be buying a new cylinder that you make sure that you check out those markings. Remember, uh, visual inspection is done every year. Hydrostatic uh, uh, test is done every five years. Um, and that's basically it uh, for today. Um, I hope you found that these videos are informative for you. I hope you're enjoying them. Please subscribe to the channel. Please share the videos with your friends. Um, if you have any questions, once again, you can just leave them down at the bottom. And um, that's basically it. Uh, I hope you have a great weekend. And uh, no matter what it is, you go out there and do it, whether it's scuba diving or wine tasting or photography or whatever it is, make sure you enjoy it and you share your passions with others and go out and find your own passion.